Good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening. Hi, everybody. Uh, starving for content. Uh, it is still vegetarian week, and today I'm going to make something I haven't made in forever. So hopefully it turns out okay. Um, we're going to make uh, buffalo cauliflower bites, uh, which is a good substitute if you're into like buffalo chicken, which I love buffalo chicken. Uh, I'm not so big on boneless buffalo chicken, but you know, every once in a while you hit the TGI Fridays or the Applebee's. Uh, but these are made with cauliflower. I'm such a huge fan of cauliflower. I love the flavor. I love how it changes. It's a lot like cabbage. Um, it can be sweet. It can be roasted. It can take on a turnip or a potato quality, stuff like that. Um, so today what we're going to do is we are going to make kind of a simple uh, almost a batter, really. Um, and we're going to dip our cauliflower in the batter, we're gonna bake it off, and then once it's got a really nice kind of bake and uh, golden brown skin to it, uh, we're gonna toss in some buffalo sauce, which also happens to be vegan, because it's just white vinegar, some smoked cayenne peppers, um, salt pepper, stuff like that. Um, and then the non-vegan, oh no, it's still vegan because I made it vegan on Monday. Uh, I'm gonna serve that with a side of that coconut uh, thyme and basil kind of dipping sauce that I made. So you kind of get a, a cool ranch aspect to your buffalo chicken wings. And then as a great side, we've got that big jar of vinegar that I've been adding like the carrots and the celery and the onions and the peppers and all that's in there. So that's gonna have a great flavor because that's been sitting for ages. So I'm gonna throw on my apron, get my kitchen towel, I'm gonna wash my goddamn hands. Do, 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 do. And today I'm being a very, very fancy lady um, because um, last night around midnight, I got, I woke up on the couch, I'd fallen asleep to you know, Netflix, CNN, something like that, I passed up and I was like, mm, I want milk and cookies, like a six year old who wakes up at midnight. And I'm just pretty much a grown child. Um, so without thinking, I grabbed one of my nice crystal glasses that's for a company or scotch, uh, filled that with milk. And as you guys know, or maybe you don't know, um, you should only hand wash uh, your crystal glasses. I shouldn't put them in the dishwasher, much like your kitchen knives. Um, so I'll be drinking my Riesling today out of a fine crystal glass because I didn't want to dirty another glass when I already freshly washed one. It's all about conservation. Um, especially, you know, when the world's falling apart. Um, I want to say congratulations to uh, my, my MP and my sister Shannon, their bulk order of hand sanitizer, which they uh, ordered early and wisely, finally arrived today down in Texas. So stay sterilized and stay six feet away. Lovely. I won't tell you where they live. I don't want anyone knocking on their door for their stock. I'll put a little more soap on. Oh, I wish there was something new, but you know, same day, same guy, same house, same dog, different recipe. Uh, vegetarian week is coming to a close tomorrow. And then I, I think I have finally made my mind up. I think I am in fact going to do dessert week next week and then I might do like a fat boy week after that because I am really, really in the mood to make like pierogies. I really want pierogies like smothered in sour cream. And I mean, I could have made them this week because they're just stuffed with potato. I mean, some people do it with meat, but I like mine with potato. So yeah, we're gonna go into totally fat, pre-type two diabetic dessert week. And then I'm gonna start making handmade pastas. Everything's looking up over here in Deutschland. Ah, that's good. All right, so the things you are going to need for tonight, you are going to need either milk, or if you're going full vegan, you're going to need a milk substitute. Uh, I am going to use the Oatly calcium infused um, oat milk. You are going to need three cups, uh, three quarters of a cup of that. You're going to need uh, three quarters of a cup of flour. Uh, the seasonings that you prefer, I am a salt, pepper, smoked paprika, a little bit of cayenne kind of guy. Maybe I'll throw some slap your mama in there. Um, cause why not? We're using buffalo sauce. We might as well kick it way up. Um, and you're going to need a head of fresh cauliflower. So remember I saved all those florets when we were making the cauliflower steaks. Um, depending on how many people you're making it for, you're going to want to use a whole head of cauliflower. I, however, am not because it's, it's still just me in this house. Trust me. I'm very well aware of that. In case you can't tell. Mom already needs a refill. Look at this glass. 
It's got lip marks all over it already. Great hand washing job I did. <laughs> Who cares? There's not going to be company for months. <sighs> Sad but true. Um, human contact is fun. I got to call my family down in Texas today. That was great. See everybody's faces. So that was my... Oh, thank you, Shannon. I think they're beautiful as well. Uh, I'm going to move my board over, double my working space, as you guys know I'm so such a big fan of. Um, and then I'm going to bring you over and show you uh, what we're doing with these cauliflower florets. Um, but it's actually really quite easy, guys. Um, so with the cauliflower florets, here's what we saved, right? I'm just going to dump these all out onto the board. You're looking for about an inch or two and a half centimeters from my European friends. I'm even going to save these pieces because they'll work, right? Chicken comes in all shapes and sizes. Um, but you want about an inch, inch and a half. So even this one, I can just kind of hand break apart. That'll be fine. This one's good on its own. And the only reason why you want some uniformity in the size here is because when you're roasting these off, you want them to cook kind of at an even sort of... And don't be afraid to actually get uniform with it. You don't have to, you know, you're not making it for anybody other than me right now. Um, so you can just cut that, get down to the size you want. Here, we'll take this one about here, and then maybe we'll go that way. Just like the world, all different shapes and sizes. I won't make a color comment on this one. We all know what the color of cauliflower is. <laughs> yuck, yuck, yuck. Um, these I probably won't use. I'll just eat and talk with my mouth full like a pig because I love raw cauliflower. Although, be careful, some people have uh, a reaction. Raw cauliflower can make you just a little bit gassy. Now, some people don't like uh, the stock here. I love this. I love the flavor of everything. So you don't have to worry about getting rid of it. If you want to get rid of it, go ahead, but not too much because then they're all just going to start to pebble and fall apart on you. And it's, it's really going to be a nightmare, to be honest with you. So like with this one, I'm going to go about here. And then we're going to come down about here. That's going to be great. Maybe a little too small, but like I said, there's no wrong way to do this. This one I'll leave a little fatter. I mean, this is going to be plenty for me if I eat all this. Woo, she's going to be sweating. I love spicy dishes, though. My heartburn and acid reflux doesn't, but there's a pill for that in the great saying of any American. So we've got these like so. It's basically all you need to do. I'm going to rinse this bowl out so that I can use the same thing without making a mess. Once again, lovely thing about vegetarian dishes is there's not much of a concern for cross-contamination. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do, let's give this a little dry even though it doesn't matter, but I just want you guys to be able to see everything. I'm going to take my three quarters of a cup of flour. I was lucky enough to find uh, gluten-free flour, so that's nice. I don't know the scientific process behind it, but why not? If we're going vegetarian, let's go all the way with just none of the good stuff in anything. <laughs> um, let me take my three quarters of a cup of my milk imitation. I'm not going to put that in yet. I'm going to put my healthy amount of slap your mama. My smoked paprika. It's about a teaspoon. Maybe a little more. You don't have to, not exact. I'm going to do my teaspoon. Oh, well, I'll do it in my hand. That top is not going to work of my garlic powder. Healthy amount of cracked black pepper. And then before I add my milk byproduct in, what I wanna do is I just wanna kinda give all these dry ingredients a toss, much like you would if you're breading chicken. Try and get up as many clumps as you can, right? So we got a nice fine. If you have a flour sifter, feel free to use that, but this process works just as fast and it's not another large kitchen item that's getting dirty and needs to be cleaned later. Simple whisk and then we're just gonna keep everything moving. 
And then you can see, now what I wanna try and do now is I wanna constitute as much of this as I can, break up the parts, get everything on the sides mixed up, and then I'm gonna keep going here. Get ourselves a nice kind of batter. And then it's easy from there. I'm gonna throw a glove on, like I do whenever I'm dipping and breading, doing all that fun stuff. And I'm just gonna toss all the cauliflower florets and we're gonna put them onto a foil sheet. Ah, I say it in the beginning of every video and I apologize I didn't. Preheat your oven for my people in the States. Um, I already preheated mine, but I forgot to tell you guys, because remember, nothing like getting everything together and then having to wait on your oven. For my people in the States, 450 degrees. For my Europeans, that's 230 degrees centigrade. Fahrenheit's a German word, but only the English speakers in the States use it. That's a nice batter. Oh, it smells really nice too, guys. All right, let me slap a glove on, take a sip of wine. That's most important. And then I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see everything that's going on. Let me see what kind of angle we're working with right here. See if we can do this. Oh, that'll actually work as long as the phone doesn't fall. All right, so we see everything there. Great, wonderful. Television magic. So all I'm gonna do is just pick up my florets, two, three, four at a time. Don't put them all in at once, guys, because you're not gonna get the right coating. And also, you don't have to worry about, when you wanna get a little bit of the excess off, you just pop them right in there. And no, I am not uh, oiling or buttering or pamming or greasing the bottom of this sheet because I want them to be just as they are. I'm gonna let these go for about eight minutes. I'm gonna check on them and then I'm gonna try to delicately flip them over. The best is going to be actually using something like ice tongs, something super thin metal that has um, a really tight tooth on it. You can grab it by the stock and flip them. And if not, then you wanna go with something super wide like a, a plastic tong where you can grab the whole thing um, because, you know, this isn't something that we've double dipped and floured and all this other stuff uh, and then, you know, or even deep fried. So you're gonna end up with a, a loose batter until they're completely done. Then it'll really kinda, there's nothing in there, Adam. <laughs> And that way, because the worst is like when you go through all this work and they look so delicious and yummy and then the batter falls off in the process. You don't want that. Don't worry about any of the batter that's going to drip off of these because they're just going to kind of, I don't know, almost cook up like a pancake, if you will. And sometimes I'll leave a little extra batter so that when I flip them, if anything sticks or falls off, you can just drizzle a little batter on top. And because this is such a simple flour batter and the oven is so hot, um, you're able to just kind of drizzle a little bit on top. And trust me, it'll finish off just dandy. And then once we pop these in, we'll rinse this bowl out and we're going to get started on our, um, our little buffalo sauce. I'm going to show you how I do that. Because it's, I mean, if you want, you can just super easily toss them in a Frank's Red Hot, but that is not what I do. I'm actually going to leave these thinner ones out. I'll just eat these. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's go. All right. All right. I'm going to leave this batter on the side to drizzle over when I'm done. And as you guys can see, they're already kind of pancaking around. That's It's okay. It's no problem. Don't worry. They're going to be just fine. Get this glove off so I don't make a mess. Pop these bad boys in. Middle rack. Oh, lovely. Those are going to be great. Oh. My phone was telling me to rotate it. I don't want to rotate it. Hi, Dean. How are you? Cheers, everyone. Set a timer if you want. Like I said, eight to 10 minutes. It's gonna be wunderbar. I seem to make a mess 
every day I'm in this kitchen. It's great. It's wonderful. All right, let's get a bowl here. Let's get that French grater. So Frank's makes five, six, ten varieties. I don't know. You can Wikipedia. It doesn't matter. Um, I've got their... Oh, my God. Sorry, guys. <laughs> that wasn't me. Wasn't me. Wasn't the wine. Just happened. Oh, God. There we go. Shannon, I really have to use your gift. I promise. I haven't even opened it up. I haven't... It's not like I don't have all the time in the world. Anywho... So, the Frank's Red Hot um, comes in a gazillion varieties. Um, I like to use literally their buffalo variety. And based on what we have, I'm pretty much going to use three quarters of a cup because you don't want to run out and have to remix it while it's cooling down and all that other stuff. Don't you laugh at me, Corey. Uh, so about half, three quarters of a cup. That should be plenty. I'm going to add in a scotch of apple cider vinegar. Scotch for me is a, just shy of a tablespoon, right? Gorgeous. And then, ooh, we are going to use some good old fashioned wildflower honey it's nice and thick. About another tablespoon. Salt and pepper like I put on everything. Oh, simply take a fork. It's super easy. We're going to whisk that up so it's all evenly distributed. The honey is going to give you kind of that thick uh, sticking quality to the breading going to be super, super nice. Um, if you guys don't have those kind of metal ice pick tongs I was talking about so that you don't tear the bread in, here's the other tongs I was talking about. Get something with like a nice kind of silicone end so you can grab the entire floret and flip that over. And if, and if, you, if any of it has come off uh, in the baking process, just go ahead and put a little bit more on, maybe add another 10 degrees, five degrees Celsius to your um, oven, <laughs> and then that'll brown off while everything's finished roasting. Um, you're gonna take this beautiful mix, let's give this a taste. Oh, oh, that's so good. Now, then when I plate it, I'm going to use our uh, Thai basil mint and coconut yogurt uh, dipping sauce that I've left really cooling in the fridge. In fact, I might even pop it in the freezer so it's nice and thick. And when you dip those hot makeshift uh, boneless chicken wings, uh, the cauliflower flirt wings, um, it's gonna be a great contrast in flavor. Also, what I've been talking about and adding to for the last two weeks um, is my home pickling. And as you can see, I've got my carrots in here with my mustard seeds and my black peppercorns and my cloves. I've got my three red peppers in there, um, those onions I've been adding as I go, and just kind of dig in, grab a whole bunch, and set that on the side. It's gonna be this sweet and savory and kind of a that vinegar spike or sour that you get um, to the really hot buffalo sauce with the cool um, dip. This, this can make as an appetizer, a party dish. Um, you can use this as a, an entire meal, depending on the amount you make. Um, it's really, really great. Um, so to you guys, cheers. Finish that one off. If you have any questions, let me know. Tonight was a short episode because cooking vegetarian, super simple, super healthy. Um, and I will send you a final picture when all is said and done. As I say every week, we are dealing with a physical global pandemic, which is a physical problem. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face. Stay six feet away from each other. Stay home. Let the frontline workers take care of this. But more importantly, emotional, mental diseases are just as important as a physical disease. So reach out to the people you love. Reach out to the people who might be lonely. Reach out to the people who you know are living alone or elderly. Um, loneliness kills people just like Corona does. I love you guys so much. I will see you tomorrow. Thank you for watching. Mwah!